And I think that's part of using the technology too, because if they feel, I find with this group especially, if they feel like they can be successful, then they work really hard and they're very engaged. And also if they are interested, they stay engaged. Yeah, but being able to see videos a lot of times is helpful for them. Just a different depiction of what they're learning. Yeah. All right guys, today we're gonna do our technology piece of our science lesson. So we're gonna look at an animated slideshow of the rock cycle. So what happens to rocks over time? So these are gonna be largely drawings of um, rocks and what happens to them, but the animated part means that we're gonna watch them move. We're gonna see how those rocks move. Cool. What is it called when rocks move? Alexis? Move or break? When they move. Erosion. Erosion, and what are the things that have to move the rocks to make it qualify for erosion? Wind, water, and ice. Wind, water, and ice, okay. And Alexis mentioned breaking. What would breaking rocks be? Sam? Weather. Weather. So today we're going to look at some different things that happens to that happen to rocks over time. Um, the first thing we're going to start with is see this mm -hmm. flashing mm -hmm. stuff, and we have our caption tells us it's a magma chamber. And I'm going to push play so we can watch how it moves. Ready? Yeah. So when it comes out of the volcano, it's got to crystallize, right? It's got to harden. So here's what that looks like. Whoa. Whoa. You guys want to see that again? Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do, guys, is we go through, I've got five questions for you for each slide. The first one is, what does the animation show? Okay. And then the final question is, is this an example of erosion? And I already answered that for us. So let's continue. So we've got a rain cloud falling down, and it says erosion of solid rock producing sediment. Click on the cloud to see landscapes formed by erosion. So let's click and yeah. see. All right, we've got all these places in the United States. Let's start in Alaska. Yeah. Remember yeah. we talked about what glaciers can do? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you read that a little bit louder, Keegan, so kids can hear? Valley glacier scrapes out a U-shaped valley in Alaska. Yeah. So that's pretty cool to have this whole landscape was carved out by ice. Oh, that's definitely going to be erosion. <coughs> definitely erosion. Yeah. This one has been messed out. Sure. Cool. All right, let's look at some sea cliffs. How long do you think this change took? Alexa? Maybe a year or around that amount of time because something like that couldn't just happen. Boom. Okay, so it must have happened over a long well, period of time. We could have, but not very likely. All right, so we're going to continue. And it says transportation of sediments. Click on the river to see an animation of the sediment transported by moving water. Whoa. Ready? Whoa. 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 <laughs> so there goes the sediment. It's a lotion. In the first box, what you're going to do is, with your group, you're going to describe what the animation shows. All right, so I'm next, done. you're going to write, how has the land changed? So you know what these rocks, rocks are being dragged away. And then what's, what's the land going to look like after they're dragged away? It's going to be left behind. Might have. Okay. Once you get how the land has changed, Mm -hmm. Start working on how what might have caused the change and why. Okay. All right, and then decide how long is this change going to take. All right, who can share their answer for number one? And what's causing this change? Right? Um, the pressure and speed force the rocks move. Your back pressure and speed of what? The water. The water. Great. Let's look at what the sediments are doing now. Do you guys see what Alexis was talking about? Yeah. Where the water is sort of cut away pieces of the land? Mm hmm Yeah. And then the little, little ones at the very end to the right might be clay, yeah. or they might turn into little pebbles. Why mm -hmm. do you think the large ones are stopping sooner, Leah? Because you can, I think they're stopping sooner because the... Uh, um, the sand grains are probably starting to build up. So I think it's just the weight 
since the small ones, they're lighter and they can actually keep flowing, they kind of float in the water, and the bigger ones sink, so they can't go as far. Yeah. Alright, so let's look. Here's the rock where it starts out. Well, it looks like and then we're going to talk about this a lot next week, too. When, it melts. What pressure does to rocks? It melts them. So they're going to be compacted. Whoa, that's so cool. And that creates a new kind of rock. Uh, Alright, so if it keeps going down, Sylvia's right, it's going to join right up with this magma chamber. That's kind of what I said, too. It's cool. And yeah. then what happens? It's lava. And we're right back where we started, right? What I'm going to do to finish up today is I'm going to pass you an exit slip. What I want you to do is write me one example of erosion changing the earth and one example of something other than erosion changing the earth. What do you think, guys? Would an earthquake be erosion or not erosion? How come? Would it cause changes in the earth? Yes. yes. Would things move? Yes. yes. Would rocks and soil move? Yes. yes. Okay. But it's not what? Water it's not water ice. Not one water ice. Not one water ice. The textbook in itself is kind of a challenge for them. Um, so anything, but at the same time, a lot of my struggling readers were the ones who were asking if they could read captions. So that it's sort of that they're overwhelmed by the textbook as a whole, but they're still excited about getting that knowledge. So. If Putting it in smaller packets for them, I think, is really useful. And that's one of the things the slides did, was it showed them just a small piece that they could take apart. I think it helped them conceptualize what erosion is um, a little more than they had before. We did one lab where they were able to watch water erode away. Um, sort of, we built a beach and they eroded the beach. But um, in most cases, they're looking at still pictures. And when we're talking about the concept of erosion, it has to be movement. So I think it helped by... Seeing the animations, it helped them conceptualize what that movement actually looks like and sort of the before and after, so that later when they look at still pictures, they can sort of see what might have happened to cause the movement. There's actually OERs that I found that are still pictures, um, but I thought this was more powerful just in that they could see that in motion and see it happening. The nose falling off the man in the mountain. We don't think was caused by wind, water, or ice, so... Or do we think it was caused by wind, water, or ice? It wasn't. Yeah, it, just, it's, it was. It isn't because... It was they didn't even said that they, it was deforming, it was deforming, so they tried to fix it, and it's not small. Okay, so people were involved in that when you but it's a good example.